Well, again, welcome to Interface Spiritual Center Worldwide, where we acknowledge we had a divine appointment here today, didn't we? Yes. Yes. We heard the call and we answered. And in recognition of our viewing audience, I know that you did not tune in by chance, that you too had a divine appointment, because we're all in this thing called life together. And that when we want to grow and unfold, it's amazing. A book will fall off the shelf, we'll open something up, we'll hear a divine call, someone will say something, it will stimulate something within us that we have been thinking about, that's been permeating within us. And I remember my late husband, Neil Stroud, and I, we, I was Catholic, and he had never been to any kind of a formal religion. And so we were on a quest. And someone said, you need to go to the Religious Science Church in La Crescenta, and it's all about we're all one, that all paths that lead to God are good. And I said, this is exactly what we have been looking for. And when we walked into that, that spiritual center, we knew we were home. You know that in the first 30 seconds when you come to something, that there is an energy, you feel at home, and that you can just breathe easy. And you know, I am with my people. I am with my soul community. And it feels so good. And as I was sharing, and I share this almost every Sunday, when it's half past six on the evolutionary clock, there's no turning back. That pull is involuntary to grow and unfold our spiritual life because we're only gonna take one thing with us and that is our consciousness. Mm -hmm. And I know a few of my favorites out there want me to will my shoes to them and I will, but I'm only taking my consciousness with me. And when we really get clear about that, then we wanna release what no longer serves us. We want to release energies that are heavy. We want to release things that have hurt us deeply, that we have suffered in our lives. Dostoevsky said that I may be worthy of my sufferings. In other words, that when we are worthy of our sufferings, we have learned, we have grown past them. We no longer hold on to the grudges, the hurts. We no longer have to repeat the story over and over, especially to our dearest friends that have like heard it, been there, done that, got the t-shirt, no, can it tell me one more time? The greatest gift that we can give to one another is to not allow them to be less than who they are in our presence. I love you, I want the best for you, and what I know is this no longer serves you. And when we get it, that this no longer serves the energy of forwarding and advancing our lives, something is quickened within us, and we are never again the same. Some people try to make it so simplistic uh, about, you know, well, it's just, you know, I, I, I've heard about this. This is a way of life. We never stop growing. This is an evolution. This is an unfoldment. We never arrive. And this, as long as we are here on the earth plane, we all have feet of clay. We all have learning and growing to do. So remember that drawing the larger circle is first drawing the larger circle for ourselves. So awaken to spirit is our theme today, is plant the seeds and reap the rewards. And if we plant the seeds with love in soil that is fertile, and it's very interesting, I have a gardener that I adore, his name is Felipe. And he loves, I tell him he is the man, I call him my green man. He is the man with the green thumb. Everything he touches just turns, it's just beautiful. And he had to change days. And I thought that, you know, that day didn't work for me. And so he said, well, I'll send my brother. And his brother came from, for one year. My plants were kind of withery. They weren't the same. You know what I mean? They just were not the same. And he would come and mow and blow, and then he was gone. And it was just amazing how that would go. And so I said, I, I said, I really miss my Filippi. And uh, so I called him and I said, you know, come on the day that works for you. Because I would rather you have come on a day where my plants will respond to you and they love you. And I said, we all love you. So Filippi came back and everything just started unfolding. And I, I go out into the, the yard. I go, Filippi, oh, look at everything. It's just so green. He goes, oh, yes, Dr. Sharon, it is so green. And I love you, too. I love you, too. And so we got this wonderful symbiotic relationship. And that I so appreciate his green thumb. And we know people that can touch things, and they just transform. Why? Booker T. Washington, who was an amazing, amazing man, and chemist. He actually invented peanut butter, and I bless him so much as a vegetarian. <laughs> God bless you, Booker D. Uh, people would go to him, and they would see his laboratory and his plants. Everything was amazing. And they would say, what is your secret? 
what is your secret? Everything you touch just flourishes. It grows. Make them a tiny seed. It's just amazing. He said, I simply love them. I simply love them. And if we simply love what we do and do what we love, there is no greater combination than that. Jesus wrote uh, many, many things, uh, 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 parables that were written down that I want to share with you this book. And it's called Learn to Live by Irvin Seal. And it's the meaning of the parables that were written. And one of the parables is the parables of the seeds. And that he talked about that the seeds were, th were thrown on, on, on soil that was very hardened and it was like the wayside. And that we go on the highways, we see the wayside. And isn't it always amazing when these little tiny dandelions, they come up through like the cement and they come up and they're blooming and they're just, I just bless them and say thank you. But nothing really takes root. And then he talked about not only from the wayside that the seeds are thrown out in, uh, in rocky soil. And that, you know, things just kind of bloom sporadically and take root. Then he talked about the seeds that are thrown in soil that's thorny. And then he talked about the seeds that were thrown in the soil that was receptive. The soil that just took it all in. And what I discovered that Felipe did, that the other gardener did, is that he fertilized things. And he talked to the plants. And he energized the plants. When we love what we do and do what we love, if we have projects, we put our attention there. Where thought goes, energy flows. Everything responds to our thought. I must have a washing and dryer that you know, was built in 1850 because sometimes I come out and it's gone from the laundry room into the kitchen and it has uh, progressed and with all the rattling and the shaking. And I, I bless it and I thank it. You know, and I said, it's just not really a priority right now for me to be getting a washer and dryer. I have other things. And so you know, I made a couple of calls for people to look out for me. Uh, for a new washer and dryer, but it is amazing that they have been there. But I bless them because I know that it looks like, you know, it looks very animate. But this is a molecular structure of the universe. And it's getting my attention by m moving away from the laundry room into the kitchen saying, I think I need to be replaced. <laughs> this is how the universe works. And I said, I got it. And we're going to put you, you know, wherever you need to be recycled and energetically melted down and back into the universe and, and then come back in a new form and a new shape. But I know that. So when the universe gets our attention and we are planting our seeds with love and we are planting them with, a, and I think of Booker T. Washington, with all we need to do is love them. All we need to do is love our lives. That when we throw the soil on unreceptive areas, and you're, you know, and we've all done it, I've tried to talk people into this way of life, and they become even more, they dig in their hills even more, and become more stubborn that they don't need it. Or somebody gets on an ego trip, and I'm not ever going back there, but what they don't know is they take themselves with them wherever they go. Wherever we go, guess what? There we are. We take our consciousness with us. It's not going to be any different here than any other new thought uh, center in the universe because we take our consciousness with us. When we heal in the cause and mind what needs to be healed, then we recreate our experience. We do this in our families of origins. We do this in our relationships that we value. We recreate our relationships because there is no ego need that is so great that's going to split that relationship up because we never stop loving anyone we've ever loved. The seeds of love always grow. They may change form, they may go into a different garden, but the truth is love is love. It is the ground of being of the universe. And when we have the vision, we have these great visions for the things we want to create in our lives that may look ridiculous to somebody else. I love it. I have orchids that various ones of you have given me. So I have the Reverend Dennis orchid. It's blooming beautifully. I just love it. I have the Reverend Linda gave me an orchid plant that's in my windows. It's blooming beautifully. I love it. I say thank you. And then I have another orchid that Artis, who was one of our Wednesday Night Live speakers, gave me and it's blooming beautifully. And uh, Dr. Yoshi gave me one that is blooming. And I just thank all of these orchid plants and the people that gave them to me and the energy and the love that is associated with them. And to me, it's a miracle that something can have a few leaves and suddenly, you know, after a few months, they are blooming the most glorious etheric blooms I've ever seen. I think it is amazing. And when we really get that, that it's all about the miracle of life and the loving them and the energizing them. 
And, and uh, Mary, you gave me that beautiful plant that I've had for five years that you know I have in the kitchen. And I think of the people that gave them to me, and I bless our relationship, and I bless the energy and the love that's associated to the unfoldment of this miracle of life. And it really is about a miracle. I remember that when I lived in Coronado for several, several years, I lived right on the water. I had a beautiful place in Coronado. And after 13 years, I decided, I need trees. I need some soil other than sand. I want, I want some energy here. You know, I think the old, the born, being born in Oklahoma, you know, you, you went a little greenery. So I thought, so I went out to Mount Helix in San Diego. I found an old adobe estate. It was really <coughs> run down. It had a beautiful little guest house, but it was just like so run down. And the adobe was beautiful, but you went in and they had put down floors that you just wouldn't leave in an adobe house of, you know, that real slick stuff. And I mean, the pool was so bad that it was green. It looked like a swamp. But I saw through all of that, and I saw that this house could be absolute miraculous. It was 5,000 square feet, and I could see a grand room where we could do a lot of things uh, that we didn't have necessarily have to do at the center. And the, the whole energy of the place for me was miraculous. So I brought my dear, dear friend, Jerry Lennon, who goes all over the world speaking. She was here a couple of weeks ago, and it was so wonderful to have her energy with us. She does you know, PowerPoints. She's a biochemist. She's an amazing woman. And I took my daughter. And now you have to realize my daughter's raised in Coronado, a gated community on the ocean. So I take and I go, and here's the house. Well, you know, it needed a new roof, incidentally, as well. It is looking not too, it's looking pretty shabby. But I said, you know, we can do this, and we can put tile floors, and I can, you know, get my friends out here that are artisans, and we can redo this brick over here, and we can get the pool back, and redo the guest house, it'll be the perfect place for counseling. I can just, you know, in this lawn, we'll get it going, and I'm just doing this whole thing about my vision. And I turned to Jerry and I said, what do you think? She goes, if you see it, I see it. <laughs> and my daughter's lips quivering. <laughs> and I go, what is it, honey? She goes, mommy bought a dump. <laughs> and just started just sobbing. And I thought, well, obviously she doesn't see what I see. <laughs> so she graduated from high school, and I had sent her to Europe for the summer. So when she got back, guess what? Everything was fantastic. But we did it in three months. Mm -hmm. It was absolutely amazing that the seed of this idea of making it really a spiritual center and the energy of the trees and the flowers and we planted flowers and we planted all these beautiful things. And there were the old trees that had probably been there for years and years and years. And it all just was so amazing. She said, I just can't believe this is the same house. I said, yes, I had the vision. Without vision, I said, yes, the people perish. We need to have the vision to plant the seed, to nurture the seed, to fertilize the seed, to see it come to fruition, to blossom into that goal, that aspiration, and that opportunity that's there for each and every one of us. And I make the declaration, my highest vision, my deepest desire, my most ardent goal is an already accomplished fact in mind and experience. And that all we have to do is really imbue the energy and the project with love. Because I believe the ground of being for all of us, no matter what we're doing, is relationships. And for all the computer people out there that are out there troubleshooting, guess what? It's about relationships. It's about relationship with what looks like inanimate objects, but it's not. It's a molecular structure. Sometimes trying to get our attention by you know acting up, and then we, re we react to it. But the energy of relationship is the ground of being to have that generosity of spirit, the gratitude, and the energy of grace that goes before us and prepares the way, which is such an opportunity for each and every one of us. So as we put our seeds out there, are we nurturing our seeds with love? Are we influenced by what people are saying about the economy? Do we buy into it? I had someone say to me at her business Thursday night at the street fair that it was a lot easier before there was all this competition in shops. And I said, you cannot buy into that. I said, that is the first thing that's going to contract your business. There is a mutual cooperation. You bless all businesses. You see all businesses as thriving. And I've got colleagues that say we've gone through, you know, 
a real contraction. And I said, with every contraction in a ministry, there's an equal and greater expansion. Yeah. And with every, got it brother, and with every opportunity that we have where it looks like it's all gone away, on the horizon there are other people, places, and things coming, bringing them in, yeah. taking a, the glad shout, here they are at last. So when we start getting panicky and it all looks like it's disappearing, hallelujah. Because at a higher level, it's coming in at a vibratory frequency that's going to be pressed down, shaken together, and flowing over into every area of our life. We cannot collapse ourselves into these so-called contractions where it looks like it's all gone. Because behind the scenes, there's an energy. It's building. It's under the surface. It's in the soil. And the roots are going down. And they're pushing up. And just because we don't see it right away, we're not going to go out and dig up the seeds to see how they're doing. We're going to know and trust and have faith in the realization that all is unfolding as it should. And in the ancient of days, where the Chinese would plant their bamboo for 10 years, nothing happened. Can you imagine? They're watering it and they're blessing. Nothing's happening. But on that 10th year, it grows 100 feet out of that nurturing, out of that perseverance and persisting and loving and all of the energies that allow it to feel safe and to shoot up and to realize energetically that it's a new day, that I am planting my seeds with love and I am reaping the rewards. And I love the biblical verse about that we go within to the secret place of the Most High. And as we pray to our Father in secret, we are rewarded openly by the outward demonstrations of our lives. To pray to our Father secretly is to plant the seeds in the soil. It's dark, it's moist. Energetically, we know that we don't see each other. We don't see anything much at all. But one day we look out, there it all is. It's all there for us. We have the faith as a grain of mustard seed. And we say yes with God, all things are possible to them that believe. Do we believe? Yes. yes. Do we have the experience of God consciousness? Yes. yes. We realize God is our source and we know this day in whom we live and move and have our being. I would not be in any other way of life. I love our way of life so much. God bless you. I love you and we are what? Going higher yet. Where are we going? Higher yet. Where? Higher yet. And so it is.